my name is Thelma Stober and I'm a trustee at the National Emergencies Trust. I'm also a survivor of the um, 7th of July 2005 uh, London bombing. Faith communities and faith-based organisations are often amongst the first on the scene during a national emergency, providing support and comfort. You're also often the last to leave, long after the blue lights and other organisations have moved on, but the need to recover remain. And I can tell you firsthand that 17 years on, we have faith groups attending the memorial service that we have on the 7th of July every year at, um, at um, Hyde Park. So thank you all for that support. It's not unusual to see the church, mosques or synagogues or other temples becoming the focal point for relief efforts. We saw countless examples during the pandemic, as well as other recent tragedies, such as the Grenfell fire and serious national flooding. I know the work that um, Interfaith Group did with um, Grenfell. In fact, I co-chair the Memorial Commission and we do work with all the um, Interfit groups um, in that area. Today, Vijay and I are going to talk to you briefly on who we are and uh, why the National Emergencies Trust exists and the importance of partnership with faith communities and organizations to our work responding to national emergencies. The story of NET. The National Emergencies Trust was launched as a charity in 2019 with the support of the charity sector survivors, the resilience community, the Duke of Cambridge, and many others. Our story, however, began with the major UK emergencies of 2017. This time, almost five years ago, we witnessed major terror attacks in London and Manchester, where 36 people were killed, hundreds of people were physically injured, and countless more in need of psychological, psychosocial support, followed by the horrific fire at Grenfell Tower, where 72 innocent people lost their lives and the community was left devastated and still are. In fact, today I'm just coming from a memorial service to commemorate the fifth anniversary of the Westminster bombing. During these times of emergencies, the charity sector responded valiantly. Charities recruited local volunteers, provided items to support those affected, and raised funds from generous people across the UK who want to help. However, these incidents also presented some time for reflection afterwards. Could we as a sector do things differently or better? How should we effectively coordinate amongst ourselves during challenging times such as these? How can we best harness the huge outpouring of public goodwill? And I have to say, to help those who've, who've, whose lives have been changed overnight by those devastating events. I know because I was one of them. To look at one example, just look at the response to the Grenfell fire. We saw a huge outpouring of public generosity over 10,000 online giving pages were set up. There were 10 different fundraising appeals and 20 different ways people affected could receive charitable financial assistance. The downside to this was that it was wholly uncoordinated. And I have to say, it took some time for many people who were desperately in need to receive support because of the state of confusion. It was confusing for the public who to trust and what legitimates. There were cases of fraud and there were cases of well-intentioned people getting into difficulty. For example, a school teacher from the area setting up an online page and raising over 1.5 million and then having no way of getting those funds to people affected. Most importantly, it was confusing for survivors and victims on where to get support. And given all these different sources of support, people were having constantly to retell their stories and being re-traumatized by doing so. The Charity Commission therefore brought the sector together to help this answer these questions. And when it came to the question of the best way to raise and distribute 
funds during a national emergency, the decision was taken to set up one national emergency trust, which was the answer. Our mission is to coordinate fundraising during national emergencies by launching one trusted place to give on behalf of the UK. We work closely with online giving platforms such as Just Giving, the main broadcasters and central governments to communicate with the public and with corporates, trust and others. We then ensure that funds reach people on the ground very quickly and fairly covering their needs. We have a board of trustees and an allocation committee who assess the needs using intelligence from our network and then make funding decisions. And we work with distribution partners, usually charities on the ground to get funds out, catering to physical injury, bereavement, mental health, support and hardship. When do we activate? When do we launch? It's probably important to say that we have four criteria for launching an appeal and our threshold is relatively high. So we asked ourselves these questions. Is there a national emergency of significance? Is it on the news and on the social media? Is there a need? Is there an unmet need? Are you in need for support? All emergencies produce needs, but most can be met by local response. Is there likely to be public support for the appeal? Is there a propensity to give? And finally, the board will consider whether it feels like the right thing to do. If we launch, will people donate? When we talk about propensity to give, we work with online giving platforms to gather intelligence on immediate number of pages set up. So when we ask the questions, finally, is it the right thing to do? We have a board of experts who have been involved in the 2017 emergencies that occurred, seven, seven terrorist attacks, national flooding, who can provide advice. Looking back over the last 50 years, we would have alleviated, activated on average every 2.5 years which gives an indication of our threshold. We put survivors and their loved ones in front and at the center. Every emergency will be different. So we pride ourselves in being a truly flexible funder. The funds are used to support people in four key ways through grants to charities and gifts to individuals. We help people to recover and rehabilitate from physical injuries they may have sustained. We ensure that loved ones get access to meaningful bereavement support. We support those affected with their mental health. As you can imagine, those affected can experience significant trauma and may require help for many years after. I can testify to that. And we also help those affected financially for whatever reason to build their lives and livelihoods. For example, those impacted by floods or fire. An early initiative of the trust was to establish a survivors advisory forum and an equity scrutiny group to put lived experience at the center of decision-making. Over the past two years, we have been working closely with our survivors advisory forum, which I chair, to understand how we can best meet future survivors' needs, including informing how we release funds and design an application process that limits unnecessary trauma. Members of the Survive, uh, Survive, Survivors Advisory Forum volunteer their time and we're extremely grateful for their support. And I have to say the members of that forum are from all the emergencies that we've experienced so far. Ms. Thelma mentioned the National Emergencies Trust launched in November 2019 and a short while later uh, in March 2020, as everyone else in the UK and the world felt and experienced 
uh, the pandemic began and we were in the middle of one of the most challenging times in our recent collective memories. Um, as you will have seen and been part of, communities across the UK responded um, and supported each other and were at the forefront of the national efforts in responding, including importantly faith communities. Um, at NET, we didn't expect the pandemic to be our first appeal, but like everyone else, we had to quickly respond. And it quickly became apparent um, how important the power of partnerships was going to be. We launched a fundraising appeal uh, in March 2020, and some of the stats in this slide show uh, we raised nearly 100 million pounds altogether from the generous British public. <clears throat> Most of this has been distributed via community foundation partners. Um, there's 46 community foundations across the UK um, working with local and grassroots organisations. And we also work with national charities like Cruise, Mind, Bernardo's to target funding towards specific needs and communities. Um, so over 14,500 projects supported in total uh, with this funding, including specifically to faith communities. And faith-based organisations helped us by providing food and other essential items, uh, providing mental health support, information and advice and with social, social isolation. Um, the average grant size overall was only about £5,000, so it shows that went huge amounts going out to these grassroots charities, but they made an important impact. Um, and to help with context, the largest grant to a faith-based organisation was over £30,000 to Harrow Central Mosque and the Sweet Islamic Centre in June 2020, and the smallest was £130 to Canon Pine Church in Herefordshire in May 2020. And finally, just while I'm on the pandemic, a quick plug that we are still distributing funds via a local action fund, um, in partnership with Crowdfunder, we aim to help local charities and groups across the UK to address the financial impacts of the pandemic. Um, so if you know of any organisations that might be relevant, um, please do help raise awareness and share with your networks. Um, the Local Action Fund is a £1.5 million pot that gets £10,000 out to local projects, um, making a positive difference in their communities. And projects already raising funds as part of the initiative include... Um, Two minutes. Church. Thank you. Uh, St Thomas Church in Swansea, uh, which is supporting its community with social outreach programmes and the Foundry Church in Witness, which is providing food parcels in their community. So if you'd like any further information, please do let me know and I'll be happy to have a chat. And then our final slide is, um, at the moment we're preparing for the next emergency, uh, whenever or whatever that might be in the UK. And as the pandemic has shown, disasters and emergencies don't discriminate and can affect anyone. Uh, we're a small team at the National Emergencies Trust and our approach is very much partnership driven. So one of our key tasks is making friends before we need them and establishing partnerships now ahead of the next emergency. Um, and ahead of challenging times, we need to know who we can pick up the phone to, and communities and charities need to know that we'll be there. Um, and we need to be ready to serve all communities. So we're building partnerships with organisations that focus, for example, on supporting black and minority ethnic communities, such as the Biobab Foundation or the Muslim Charities Forum, and organisations which focus on young people in trauma, like the UK Trauma Council. And we know that our response needs to be needs to draw on local communities' own experience and be face sensitive to all people uh, and communities impacted. Um, as Thelma said, um, it's often the mosque, the synagogue, the church, the temple, the Gudbara that will be the centre of the emergency response. And we want to be able to fund local responses via our partnership with the Community Foundation. Uh, and we saw this with St. Clement and St. James in response to the Grenfell Tower fire, as well as the Muslim Response Unit and many other Muslim based organisations. So we know um, what happens during an emergency. We want to be there to support and work with. Um, and finally, uh, no two communities are the same. So we would value expert advice from this network, um, others, about the community that's been impacted and ensuring that we are being face sensitive um, during an emergency. And so to quickly wrap up our short presentation today, we hope you know a bit more about uh, who we are and feel able to share with your networks either now or when something terrible does happen and how we may be able to work together during future national emergencies, whenever or wherever that might be. Mm -hmm.